burials represent these incredible time capsules. If you've got a burial with bones in it, um, then I'm very excited because I'm, a, I'm an osteologist, I'm a biological anthropologist, and I can look at those bones and I can extract information from them and start to piece together something of a biography of that person. And the ones I want to talk to you about this afternoon are the Amesbury Archer, and then a story from Anglo-Saxon England, but with some very, very exciting new science um, around that site. So we'll start with the first one, on the outskirts of a village called Amesbury, the richest Bronze Age burial that had ever been discovered in Britain. And here you can see the inhumation of the skeleton, um, and you can see that there are objects all around it. The pots in his grave, they give a name to this whole culture. So we talk about this culture as the beaker culture, and it's because they had these beakers. They're part of a much wider culture that's there in Western Europe, and that we then see it arriving in Britain. So the big question is, um, is this just a few people coming over from continental Europe to Britain, or is this actually a big new group of people coming into Britain? Couldn't answer that until genetics came along. And they're now sequencing entire genomes from ancient people. So extracting DNA from old bones, sequencing the genomes. And if you look at the genomes of people in the Bronze Age in Britain and compare those genomes with the earlier people in the, ne in the Neolithic, so going back to 3000 uh, BCE, we're now looking at a 90% population replacement in Britain in that third millennium BCE. It's quite extraordinary. What we don't know, and now the ball is back in the archeologist's court, is what that was like on the ground. It could have been a big invasion and lots of fighting, or it could have been that just more and more families were coming over in that, those three centuries, and that it was all just very gradual and peaceful and you wouldn't have really noticed too much um, in a dramatic way during those three centuries. We don't know. And so now it's important that the archeologists go back and really focus on those three centuries with very good dating um, and really kind of go in and find out what was happening. Going back to our Amesbury Archer though, what about him? Is he an incomer? Is he an immigrant? Um, we can look at his DNA and indeed his DNA has been extracted and he's got that signature of the step. So he's got that step signature, but that signature could have come through earlier in his family. It could have been his dad or his mum or his grandparents or his great-grandparents that were the incomers and that he was a, effectively a local. So we can't tell looking at his DNA, but we can tell looking at his teeth because you make your teeth when you're a child and you incorporate the signature of the geology that you grow up on. So oxygen and strontium isotopes in his teeth tell us that he did not grow up on Salisbury Plain. He grew up hundreds of miles away somewhere around the Alps. So we know, so one extraordinary bit of biography, never written down, it's locked away in his bones. We know that he made that journey, that he's traveled hundreds of miles. He may have traveled much more widely. He may have been all over the place, but at least we know that he grew up in the Alps and he ends his life on Salisbury Plain. Finally, a story with some very hot off the, hot off the press news. Um, my very first time team dig took me to Hampshire um, to a site called Bremer, and it's a triple burial between the, between the legs, between the upper legs of these two men, these are men in their 20s, you can see something curved in there, that's a child's skull. So there's a three-year-old child and two 20-year-old men. What on earth happened to this community? When you have this kind of age profiles and you have multiple burials, you think something catastrophic happened. It is either conflict or disease. And I was writing the book and I read about a site in Cambridgeshire called Edix Hill, which looked very similar to Bremer, very similar. It had been sampled as part of a really big project looking at 6th century remains right across Europe and as far as Britain, and looking for one sort of DNA in particular. Because in the 6th century, we know that a big plague swept through the Byzantine Empire. And we've got very good documentary evidence of that plague sweeping through the Byzantine Empire. We have no documentary evidence um, that anybody's really looked at or, or noticed to suggest that it ever came to Britain. And yet here at Edix Hill, they found plague DNA. 
I thought, hang on a minute. Maybe it wasn't conflict then at Bremer. And my wonderful friends at the Francis Crick Institute here in London um, went and sampled those bones. It looks like we've got the second site, a sixth century date, showing that we've got Justinianic plague in Britain. This is fascinating because we didn't know. We didn't know this was happening. We don't seem to have it in the documentary records. It's going to make us look at what was happening in what used to be known as the Dark Ages in a very different way. You know, we now know that there's a devastating plague which is wiping through the country in the sixth century. And so when we look at the archaeology now, we have to bear that in mind. So this science is completely transforming the way that we look at the past. There's information locked away. And what we're doing is accessing that information more than ever now. And we're unlocking those ancient memories.